thank you very much. Um, I will talk to you this afternoon about uh, low Lagrangian spacious metamorphic reaction in anomaly unreactive rocks like crystal basement units, and uh, the potential importance for the upper crust of softening where, when they are pre -erogenic. This is a part of a broader work that intends to try to decipher the metamorphic and structural history of external basement uh, units and origins. And this is fairly difficult very often because um, metamorphic conditions always very often occurred at low grade uh, uh, conditions in these units and because uh, um, it needs to understand the interplay between metamorphism and the formation that, fought, that can further trigger uh, metamorphism. For example, the amount of fill silicates, as you can see here, uh, strongly control the strain accommodation as reported in the sketch of a basement unit in the Alps, while uh, wherein and others. And um, um, low-grade metamorphic reaction in these um, crystalline units of the upper crust are, are very often described in sim kinematic uh, associated to deformation structures, as you can see here at an outcrop scale from an example. Of, however, casostatic metamorphism or uh, 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 hydrothermal alteration that takes place in range spacious conditions uh, uh, can also um, affect large igneous provinces and can also um, phyllosilicates, for example, and other um, products of these low-grade metamorphic conditions. And so we may expect that this can have an impact on the rheological behavior of uh, the prothylate. So we may wonder if it is possible to differentiate the pre-cinematic and uh, syncinematic reaction low crystalline rocks and which is the calendar of both the type of reactions within an orogenic cycle, and therefore which is the impact of both, uh, or the potential impact of both on large scale the formation and structural style. So we attempt to answer these questions in a natural laboratory, uh, which is constituted by the central Pyrenees, for which you have a schematic geological map here, um, in particular, we focused on the Variscan crystalline basement that is marked here in grey and in the Bielsa basement of the bowl that you can see here in the cross sections where it, where it is a part of a series of basement stacked units compose the central axial zones. So the Belsa Massive is the very end of the southern part of the axial zones uh, and it um, was affected by at least the two orogenic cycles, the Variscan one and the Alpine one, and the fact of being at uh, the southernmost part of the axial zones means that it is the coldest, so we can say, uh, relative to the Alpine deformation. So it is the, the one that has the best chances to have recorded the entire metamorphic history of this kind of the basement unit. And as you can see at the kilometric scale, already at the kilometric scale, we can observe that in this massive, as in the other closed massive, there's a sort of distributed deformation that actually is underlined at the field scales by the series of myelonites that are, very, uh, that are spaced of about uh, 100, maximum 200 meters, with a very high strain gradient. We pass from undeformed granites to melanitic corridors, from undeformed granites to melanitic corridors within some tens of meters. So this wondered about the link between low-grade metamorphism that has been recorded uh, uh, along the orogenic cycles so within those masses and the structural style at the large scale. So for that, we collected a series of samples along one of the, those strain gradients. And here you have three representative uh, microviews of those samples from the undeformed ones to myelonites. And as you can see, as the degree of deformation, everything is pervasively altered in the Grinch's spacious conditions. And that's the characteristic of the entire massive, the, ma the neovel masses as well, and the large part of the actual zones. So um, in the undeformed samples, you, we can see that the metamorphic reactions involves the breakdown of uh, biotite and amphibose into chloride and secondary minerals 
like titanite and the breakdown of felspar into sericides. All the reactions are um, pseudomorphic and fluid per percolate mainly at the brain brains. So this kind of reaction are of course pre-cinematic because we observe no deformation in those samples. In discrete the undeformed portion are preserved uh, among fractures, but in features that are related with deformation, a new uh, Phyllosilicates precipitate. You can see, for example, new chloride is precipitating within cracks uh, compared to the old chloride that was replacing an ancient biotite. And um, in myelonites, brittle and ductile, big brittle and ductile deformation actually coexists in this myelonite, and we have um, new phyllosilicates, both chloride and white mica, that um, crystallize uh, associated to deformation structures like in shear planes, but also starts to replace the ancient chloride and white mica. And the interconnected layers of big mica, or white mica, that starts to form. In order to track the condition at which this um, low grade metamorphic uh, reactions took place, we focused on the chemical composition of phyllosilicates, chloride and white mica. Uh, in particular, I will present here the only chloride, but for white mica is exactly the same story. And we did that by using a compositional mapping, for which you have uh, three examples here for uh, uh, corresponding samples. So the colors indicate the composition of the only chloride. Uh, for the endophone, so you have an example of the row um, content of aluminium of a chloride that is replacing a, a biotite. You see that uh, the chloride is compositionally heterogeneous in aluminium, but still only one um, group of chloride is recognized. And it's the same for white mica when it is associated to the, the breakdown of biotite. In the uh, deformed samples, instead, clearly two groups, uh, two different uh, chemical groups of chloride are recognized and different uh, chemical groups of white mica. Uh, and uh, one is uh, in the matrix and is exactly the same of the one observed in the undeformed ones. Chloride is replacing the ancient biotite and dunfables. It is iron rich, as you can see in this iron map and aluminium pearl, as you can see in this aluminium map. And the secondary chloride is actually confined to the formation structures, which, is, which means within the cracks or along the cracks in myelonites, and is of iron pearl and aluminium rich. Um, <coughs> so if we merge thermodynamic modeling and semi-empirical thermometry for chloride, we found out that uh, the first chloride crystal of 330 degrees, while the second one systematically um, had to be lower temperatures of about 280 degrees. Um, so everything points out at this stage of the existence of two different fluid rock interaction events. One that is pre-cinematic and is mainly preserved in non-deformed samples, even if it is preserved up to myelonites, and the second one that is clearly related to deformation. But in order to put it uh, to put them in an orogenic in the context of orogenic story, we need to date these two different rock interaction events. And for that, I use the uranium thorium lead dating method by analyzing by laser ablation ICPMS both of the accessory minerals that were related to the pre cinematic low grade reactions and the accessory minerals that were related to syn kinematic access uh, um, alteration. So for the pre cinematic alteration, I dated the small titanite that were the result of the breakdown of biotite. And as you can see in this uncorrected terravasable diagram, we succeeded in having a very low constrained ages despite a common lead that point out to 300 million years that is close to the age of the emplacement of the Variscan pluton. So suggests a later, a later magmatic alteration or post-magmatic alteration. Indeed, the formed samples instead, we tend to see uh, anatase, which is a polymorph of roots, uh, rather than titanite, 
as a titanium bearing uh, uh, mineral. And then in, indeed, we see systematically two types of vanities, big crystal and small deformed crystals that are uh, associated to the second group of chlorides. And as soon as we date them, two different age signatures appear, the one that still preserves the late variscan signature, and the other one systematically younger at around the 50 million years, and is, which is associated this time with the formation. As soon as we go to myelinites, the only youngest signature is preserved, and we observe the same behavior for monazite as well. So if I summarize the ages uh, in the sketch, regardless of uh, the, the mineral analyzed, we clearly see two families. One that is late variscan in time and indicates a, a fluid rack interaction that uh, postdate uh, uh, the gluten emplacement and is actually related to a percolation of a fluid, a pervasive percolation of the fluid in the tired granite at the rim bound and the, at the grain boundaries. And the other one, which is actually alpine in time or early alpine in time, and this is localized within the melanitic corridor, which seems to indicate that uh, accessory minerals tend to recrystallize as well as phyllosilicates, preferentially at this time within the melanitic corridors. So the fluid was mainly um, uh, progressively localized within the melanitic corridor as well. However, the fact that we have an alteration already at the late Beriscan and the pervasive actually alteration means that the basement was actually softened at the time. And this uh, sketch from numerical modeling uh, that represents different uh, rheological envelope. You can see that, for example, if we transform the 80% of felspar into white mica, we can largely decrease the depth of the brittle ductile transition zones. So probably the, the basement was a resi softening before the alpine shortening. And this early softening may explain why even at the kilometer scale, we have a such distributed shortening in the slices of the basement that presents this kind of characteristics. And another interesting point is the age of this distributed shortening is a, a bit um, older than the age of the reactivation of the major thrust, as if thanks to the early pre-cinematic softening, uh, during the open shortening, it was possible for those massive to have an early stage of distributed, relatively distributed uh, deformation before the localization of the deformation along the major thrust of the axial zones. The late variscan and pre-cinematic fluid rock interaction seems to control the mechanical behavior of the basement during the alpine shortening. And in conclusion, the crystal embasements of the period of the Pyrenees and the last Pyrenees, but it's uh, actually if uh, we look up, we look up in the literature, this is uh, quite common. as uh, is very reactive even at 300 degrees and may preserve several stages of the fluid rock interaction even up to myelonites. And pre-cinematic alteration is a major phase of the phyllosilicate production and cause a rock softening. And so distributed via versus localized deformation at the outcrop and at the massive scale may depend on this pre-cinematic softening. So uh, it might be interesting to investigate these processes in basement units of origin to understand the structuration. For example, comparing the structural style of basement unit that experience this kind and preserve this kind of uh, pre-cinematic uh, low-grade uh, metamorphism and the structural style of the ones that did not. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Okay, do we have any general questions? I don't think any have appeared in the chat so far. Uh, just in the meantime, I have a question about your, um, I think, your anatase. So it looked like you had quite a spread between your two populations. I was wondering if that's because of some kind of um, open system behaviour or whether you've got some dissolution precipitation happening in those crystals. 
Yeah, I think uh, in any case, there, there's, there will be a, a dissolution reprecipitation. There are two, it is clear that, uh, at least, it seems that there are two different generation of NTAs that uh, share different characteristics. So the, the, the grain size is not the same, and the microstructural location is not the same. But in any case, even the oldest one, shows evidences of dissolution and reprecipitation. So this shows evidence of recrystallization and the spread of the ages probably is because the last spot was larger than the, the size of this dissolution reprecipitations. Mm -hmm. However, uh, by following the um, evolution of these two, two signatures from the discreetly deformed up to myelonites, we can uh, argue that indeed the youngest ages uh, being only preserved in, within myelonites are really related to the formation phase and uh, have a, mean, a meaning in terms of ages or age of deformation. Great, some cool work. Uh, 